So we've now built a beautiful responsive design, but it doesn't do anything in terms of interactivity. For example, if I hover over this button, nothing happened visually and we should probably improve that. So styling various states like hover or focus is actually really easy in Tailwind. You can use state variants just like we've used responsive variants before. So say I want to change the background color of the button on hover. Let's go here and currently the background color is set to indigo 500 and right next to it I'll target the hover state with hover column and on hover we'll make the background just a bit lighter so bg indigo 400. Now if I hover over the button you can see the background color change. Nice. Let's make that hover state a little bit more interesting here so I'll add another class prefixed with hover and for this one we're going to go negative translate y 0.5. So what this class will do is lift up our button on hover, translate it up by two pixels. But before it can work, I need to enable the transform toggle class, which is necessary for any transforms to be applied. So let's have a look now. And yeah, it's moving up by two pixels. I'll also add default transition settings with the transition class. So now you should see a smooth transition on our hover state. Very nice. So what about the focus state? If I make the button enter in focus here, you can see the default browser focus state. It's useful, but it doesn't look great. And one thing I don't like in particular is how the edges are not following the rounded corners of a button. Focus styles are really important for accessibility. So we can't just remove this outline here because we don't like it and do nothing about it. So what we're going to do is implement our own focus styles using Tailwind's ring utilities. So let's target the focus state with focus column. And first, we're going to remove the default outline with outline none. So now if we try to focus on the button, you can see that the outline has gone away. Okay, let's not living like this. Let's implement our own visual styles now. So once again, I'll target the focus state. And this time I'll use a class called ring. The ring class by itself will apply a nice default box shadow around the element. And you can see when I enter focus that we have this blue outline that follows the edges nicely. Here, you have a lot of control on how the ring should look. For example, I can change the ring offset with focus ring offset two, and this will, well, offset the ring a little bit. So if I enter in focus now, you can see that nice little gap between the button and the ring. Let's change the color of the ring with focus ring, and let's make it the same color as the button. So indigo 500, very nice. And let's just fade that ring out by changing its opacity with focus ring opacity and let's go with 50. Yeah, I think it looks really good now. So we've looked at hover and focus states. What about active states when the button is clicked? Currently, if I click on the button, nothing happens. There's no visual feedback. A common design pattern is to make the button a bit darker on click so it feels like it's going into the page a bit. So let's try that. So I'll target the active state and let's change the background to indigo 600. Let's try that, hover and click, 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 click. And nothing happens, it's not working. Now Tailwind actually does support the active variant, but it's not enabled by default for five stars reasons. Let's go in our config file so we can turn it on. So you can see in here, there's a variance key. And this is where you come when you need to customize things about variants like hover, focus, active, and many more. So for example, in our case, we wanna be able to change the background color when the active state is triggered. So let's try to do this here in variants. I'll create a background color key. And here I will pass an array of the variants that we want to enable. In our case, we just wanna enable the active variant. So let's have a look now, hover, click. And yeah, it's getting darker on click, nice. But hang on a second, did you notice what happened on hover? So the button lifts up, but looks like we've lost the background color change. Remember how we had set it to be lighter on hover? This is gone. So it turns out that by defining a background color variant directly in the variants object here, we have completely overridden the list of variants that were enabled by default. We've replaced our list of variants with this array, which is just active. Whoops. That's not what we wanted. Luckily, if you look just under here, we have an extend object inside that variance. Whatever you put inside this extend object will not overwrite, but extend the list of enabled variants. So if I grab this background color here and move it inside the extend object, we should now have extended the background color enabled variants by adding active to the list. Let's try that, hover, and yet yeah, the background color changes back and when I click, it still gets dark. Perfect. 
So we've seen that you have responsive variants like SM, MD, or 2XL, and state variants like hover and focus, etc. And it's good to know that you can totally compose them or stack them together. For example, if you want to change the background of the button to green, but only on the small breakpoint and up, you can totally do that. So let's go back in our button, and here you can see on hover, we set the background to indigo 400. But let's say that when we are at the small breakpoint, on hover, and see the stacking here, we want to change the background to green 500. So now my button stays indigo 400 on hover because we're below the small breakpoint. But if I move to the small breakpoint, it will be green on hover. Okay, one thing to keep in mind with these state variants is they're not enabled everywhere. We've seen that you can use responsive variants like SM or 2XL with any Tailwind utility class. But for the state variants, we've tried to only enable them by default for the most common use cases. For example, changing a text or a background color on hover is very common, so it's turned on by default. If you try doing something a little bit more unconventional, chances are you'll need to go in the config file and enable the variants for that. So as a silly example, instead of having the background green on hover for small breakpoints, let's say we want to change the font size to something like text 3XL. So if I hover over the button, it's not going to work. Now, it's not enabled by default because changing the font size on hover is something you typically wouldn't do because it makes the layout jump and feels a little bit jarring. But let's go and turn it on in the config file. So in here, I'll go in extend once again, and this time I will target the font size key. And here we want to enable the hover variant. So it should work now, and yeah, it does. But in my opinion, it's not something you should be doing, and you can probably see why. So that's an overview of the state variants in Tailwind. The thing to keep in mind is if you're trying something and it's not working, chances are you need to go and enable that variant in the config file. Remember, defining variants directly in the variants object completely overrides the default, whereas putting it in the extend key will extend it instead.